A lot of people don't want to uh, believe that human trafficking exists in the Central Valley. It's bigger than what we thought it was. It's modern day slavery. Human trafficking is the second largest criminal industry in the world. The criminals in the area of human trafficking are those individuals that are, uh, have transported um, people across the borders or within the United States and have intended them to use them for profit. A day in the life of a victim of human trafficking is solely to survive. It's all over. Um, on the outskirts, uh, in the inner city, north, south, east, and west. Right here in the Central Valley, and if there was one, there's more. Chinese descent, uh, Hispanic, uh, South American descent, and, uh, and then more often than not, it's just they're Americans also. Human trafficking is uh, driven by a profit motive. A human being can be used over and over and over again, and that profit margin is wildly greater than the profit margin of drug trafficking. The motives and things behind slavery in the past may have been different, but the effect it has on humans is the same. Contact initially starts out as a friendship. I was 11, and um, this woman came to my house. The carrots dangled. You can do these other things, and then uh, they'll commit to that. Most people say, White people are rich, so I was like, okay. Um, she said she was gonna uh, be giving, I'm gonna have the time of my life. So we left that day and started on our journey to the United States in a school bus. They're taken out of uh, their safe place and some controlling is now in effect. They find out very quickly, all too quickly, that the promise is, is false. The coercion starts into force and threats. She told me I would get deported. So there's lots of different tactics that traffickers use to control their victims. Coercion, uh, force. It was to the point where I was scared for my life. Fear, intimidation, abuse. I saw all the welts and the bruises and the cuts on him. Even an emotional bond between a victim and a trafficker. For example, a minor child who's emotionally bonded to a trafficker who then exploits her for uh, commercial sex. End up in a ditch somewhere, get raped and killed. As a child, you're not able to protect yourself or know how to get yourself out of that situation. You're dependent on everybody. The victims are mostly children uh, and young adults. I called the police and I called CPS. They don't have the experiences in life that you and I do. They didn't listen to me. The, the system that's there to protect children, young people, had ignored her. Called the Belizean Consulate. I even called the deport, um, deporting people, asking them, begging them to deport me because I have nowhere else to go. She was threatened, uh, she was beaten, and so she knew that she had no escape. Nobody was listening, nobody was helping me. They don't know what to believe and what not to believe. Our system had let this person down. I was scared because Nowadays, it's a profit business, a big profit business, billion dollar profit business. It's not gonna go away, and it's only gonna be harder to address it down the, down the road. Uh, men, women, and children uh, are victims of human trafficking. Um, trafficking is usually in one of two areas. It's either sexual exploitation or labor. Forced on the street and prostitution. Tied to a bed. Uh, burned with cigarettes until they were compliant to do the work that they were told to do. Forced labor and invo voluntary servitude. Living at the location, they're not allowed, they're encouraged not to leave. Food's brought to them. Forced to care for three or four other children, um, even when the victim is 14 years old herself. They work from uh, 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock in the morning. Working in a field under armed guard with the threat of being shot. They're monitored by cameras. 
men could purchase them and rent them for sex for a few hours in a hotel room over and over and over again, 10 to 12 times a day. They've got nobody to turn to. Certainly there are victims who are, um, you know, under armed guard or, or shackled or something like that in extreme cases, but there are other victims that um, do walk among us, all of us, um, but yet they're still prisoners um, in their own world. And actually it's not their world, it's the trafficker's world. We all have to work together collaboratively to address the issue of human trafficking. A coalition that will advocate for trafficking victims. Locally, we have the Central Valley Freedom Coalition and also Central Valley Against Human Trafficking, which is a project sponsored by Fresno County EOC Sanctuary and Youth Services. I've never seen at any point in my career the number of people that, that want to help out on this cause. The initial solution to addressing human trafficking is building awareness. We have to understand the issue and we have to be willing to accept that it exists before we can actually intervene. I think people hear stories of, of people that are in trafficking situations, but they're not educated, so they don't even know it's trafficking. Joe Blow just needs to look, put his head on a swivel and be aware of uh, his surroundings. These people are victims. They're not the criminals, they're the victims. Show some compassion to what you see and don't be afraid to report it. There's, um, you know, remedies that the law makes available to those people. Our hope is to intervene early, rescue these victims. More important for my job, and the goal out of my day is to hold that person responsible, accountable for their crime, so they don't go on and victimize the next person. Two young girls who were uh, being forced into prostitution work on the street. They had been separated, and one escaped, escaped out of a house and ran down the street, contacted the first person they saw and said, call 911 for me. Uh, the officers got out there, they recognized what they had, they listened to this story, and they called. We were able to load her up, and she took us to the other person who was being uh, treated the same way. We rescued her and arrested the, uh, the offender who was controlling that person on the street. The relief you saw in their eyes when you pulled these people off the street and under the control uh, of the person that was putting them in that position was like uh, something I hadn't seen. It was like a person had been um, just released from, from, a, from captive and a horrible place in their life. They, uh, they rejoiced, they hugged, and it, it's something that um, motivates you to look for the next one. We named our task force the Coalition Against Human Trafficking in the Fresno Police Department. And that is in partnership with two other non-governmental organizations, EOC and Marjorie Mason Center here. Anybody is in a situation to do something about it, you know? To, if, they, if they see it, they hear about it, take responsibility, report it. Don't just hide your head in the sand. You may make acquaintance with somebody and you feel that something's wrong with them. Ask them how they're doing. Ask them, ask them if everything is okay. And if you hear something that is still elevates that suspicion, please call. As people become aware of human trafficking, they are more likely to report suspicious activities, something that doesn't seem quite right. We follow up on leads and tips through a 24-hour hotline that we've established for human trafficking. Once a person becomes aware of human trafficking, it's difficult to ignore it. Are they able to uh, talk about where they live and things that they do on the weekend um, and talk to you about uh, the enjoyments that you and I would normally have. It takes all of us, even average citizens. If you come across somebody and they feel that they have no freedoms, they don't do anything, they stay there, they live there, or there's somebody standing over them who's monitoring every piece of conversation that you're having with them and maybe controlling and answering the questions for them, it's something to be aware of. We also um, provide services and advocacy for victims of human trafficking. 
We work very closely with law enforcement, prosecutors, other social service providers, other government agencies. And we will respond immediately with trained investigators to take the lead on that case and follow up on any available lead uh, to rescue a victim and come to a resolution for it. Her mom had told me if she came back to that house, she was going to kill me. They're hidden. We don't know that they're slaves. Whereas, you know, in, in Civil War time, you knew who the slaves were. And I called Rana back, and I told her she needs to come get me now. Because if she doesn't come get me now, I don't think I'll be living um, tomorrow. So come get me now. And she told me, just hold on, she'll be there and her and an officer and another lady came and they took me and my babies and some clothes. And I didn't feel safe until I got in that van and away from the house. And all I could do was just take deep breaths with of relief because I was like, you know what? I finally have somebody to listen to me. Somebody finally said, you know what? You do need help, because all the officers that everybody I talked to never did anything. So it just felt, it's hard to explain how it felt when this woman just said, I'm coming to get you. And all I could think of is me and my babies are gonna be free. We're not gonna get beat no more. We're not going to be starved anymore. We're not going to be locked in a room anymore. I won't have to do anything I don't want to do anymore. All I could do, and my babies could do, was sleep. We were tired. We were hungry. When I saw that bed, I just, and saw that room, and saw those cameras knowing that she can't, this time she can't get me. This time she can't find me. So, me and my babies, we went to sleep. We had a warm supper that day. And all I did was just hold my babies and read them story. And told them, all I could tell them was, they don't have to worry anymore. even if you just rescued one person. That's a, that's a lifetime impact you just made on somebody. I can move forward. That's what life looks like to me. I'm moving forward now.